we can supplement all day, but we still know that there's different forms of each supplement. So taking the wrong form of vitamin D or the wrong form of an electrolyte mm. isn't going to help you. It, it has nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. So if we have a compromised gut, we're not going to be able to metabolize these things anyway. Welcome to the For You Fitness Podcast, and today we have a very special guest. This is Gabrielle Mancella, and she is the Corporate Wellness Dietitian for Orlando Health. She is also a registered and licensed dietitian as well as a PhD candidate. Yeah. You go on with your bad self. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and today we're going to be discussing a pretty hot topic, which is gut health. And we want to help you understand the hype behind it because unfortunately, most people don't understand that our gut is our second brain. It is. Absolutely. It's incredibly important to achieving optimal health. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you can agree with me on that one. Definitely. So Gabby, start us off by explaining why gut health is so important and kind of how it affects our overall health. Sure. So ultimately the gut is where all of our nutrients, our food is metabolized. So as it goes through digestion, ultimately that is not only the stopping point, but it's the beginning of absorption and it's the end of removal. So it is literally in charge of all of the vitamin, mineral, fiber distribution, and ultimately our immune system because yeah. that's where we need a lot of those antioxidants to be absorbed, digested, and then distributed throughout the body. So otherwise, if it's not functioning, we're going to have an array of problems that just can't be solved without a healthy gut. And when you say array of problems, what, mm -hmm. I mean, what does this mean for people? A lot of it starts as silent inflammation. So oftentimes we hear that and we don't know or recognize that it's going to cause other chronic diseases. So when we have chronic inflammation, that's where if you go to the physician, mm -hmm. your lab values might come back a little bit off. Um, your, you know, not just your vitamin, your lipid panels, your vitamin D, your cholesterol, your soluble fat vitamins, A, D, E, K, all of those could be out of whack. But for example, a, a few of the signs and the symptoms would be uh, lack of sleep, mm -hmm. which could lead to lethargy, you mm -hmm. could have dehydration, mm -hmm. um, constipation, bloating, mm -hmm. and you could just feel overall pretty terrible. And so that ultimately is what we call silent inflammation. And they don't really explain that very well. So no. when we're walking around every day and we're like, wow, we need a nap, that's what we mean. We mean our bodies are not performing at the level that they're capable of doing. Sure, and most people would be so quick to go to the over-the-counter drugs Absolutely. and try to uh, put the band-aid on the real mm -hmm. the real problem and so yeah. we're not getting to the root of the problem exactly I know yeah. so many people complain of inflammation achy this achy that exactly. and brain fog and mm -hmm. all um, just a slew of why they don't feel good Absolutely. and they you they never think to think that it could be caused by our gut no, no. And even with, like you said, achy joints or, um, you know, dehydration, oftentimes I know collagen supplementation is huge right now, mm -hmm. but that has to be metabolized in order for our body to use it. So right. before it even gets to our joints, it has to truck through the gut and through our intestines right. and make sure that it's able to get there. Because if, it, if there's a stopping point that you might need it before that, yeah. forget the joints, it's going to go to something else. Right. And so you your body's smarter than that. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk about metabolizing these health foods. Yes. So everybody's different, correct? Mm -hmm. So just because your girlfriend is consuming mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, and it's so healthy, yes. does that mean yeah. our bodies can metabolize it the same way? No, mm -hmm. and that's for example, even with protein supplements and things like that, um, a lot of, you know, I always go back to the tried and true vegetarianism. So mm -hmm. if you're missing just one of those amino acids to rebuild the protein for like growth, for hair growth, the strength of your nails, right. if you're missing one of those amino acids, your body is going to use it wherever it needs it first. So our bodies are very unique in the mm -hmm. sense that they heal whatever they prioritize. It's really, you can't spot clean, ultimately. Right, absolutely. So t talk to us a little bit about what could cause, mm -hmm. um, what could wreak havoc on our gut? Eating a lot of processed food is oh. ultimately going to do it because you're not getting a lot of fresh fiber. You're not getting a lot of bacteria because raw foods ultimately are, you know, they're clean, but mm -hmm. they're still alive. They still have components in them that haven't been processed down to absolutely the level of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be huge. Um, and really just there's nothing that compares to the vitamins and minerals and fresh 
produce. Mm -hmm. um, we can supplement all day, but we still know that there's different forms of each supplement. So taking the wrong form of vitamin D or the wrong form of an electrolyte mm. isn't going to help you. It, it has nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. So if we have a compromised gut, we're not going to be able to metabolize these things anyway. Right. So, so these processed foods you're talking about, these are mm -hmm. our boxed goods, these are our mm -hmm. menu items that we find on fast through, yeah. uh, fast, uh, sorry, um, fast food drive throughs yeah. um, anything that is foreign mm -hmm. and isn't a whole food, mm -hmm. essentially. Exactly. Once it's been through that processing, I mean, ultimately our produce is processed as well. We clean it, we put it through trucks and washing machines, we transport it, we put wax on our apples. That is a form of processing to get it where it needs to go. So anything that those are going to be the least processed, um, but anything mm -hmm. beyond that, I would definitely question and say, is that going to be a stable item in my in my kitchen that I want to use every single day. Right, and I, I think my clients know um, we preach quality. Yes. Because if you are consuming something oh, on a yeah. regular basis, it needs to be of the utmost quality. Absolutely. Of course, we can have our treats every yeah. once in a while. That's life, but if you are going to consume something on a daily basis, number one, it's got to make you feel great, yeah. and your, your gut's got to tell you it feels great, mm -hmm. and it needs to be of quality. Yeah. Mm, yep. Yep. Um, okay, so are there other things that could, might outside of food, mm -hmm. that could lead to an unhealthy gut? Lifestyle is probably one of the other modifiable factors. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so if you're not getting enough sleep, again, you're kind of ridding yourself of the opportunity to repair and regrow all of the you know cells that kind of overnight need to be rebuilt for the following day mm -hmm. so that could be leading to lethargy and so a lot of these symptoms that are silent inflammation we'll call it that's where we type we try to spot clean so mm -hmm. um, environmental factors such as if you don't exercise mm -hmm. you know you're not going to be tired enough to go to bed so then you're going to want to take something to sleep mm -hmm. and then you're going to want to feel more energetic the next day so you're going to want to take something mm -hmm. um, of course smoking is going to be huge because it's smoking <laughs> yeah um, but yeah just lifestyle factors being hard on our bodies and not kind of giving back to them is not going to be anything worthwhile are you talking about stress stress is huge because yeah. we do produce stress hormones mm -hmm. that you know lead to an array of other things going on mm -hmm. in our bodies so mm -hmm. weight gain um you know water retention even mm -hmm. they're all very modifiable and you probably wouldn't have to diet that aggressively if you simply just follow right. some lifestyle habits that <laughs> where do you stand on how alcohol affects your gut I enjoy my wine. <laughs> okay, good, because yes. we do too. Yes. 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 Okay. Good. Um, yeah, but I do notice that I enjoy it more when I know that I can have it every day if I wanted to. So if mm -hmm. I'm hydrating during that day, mm -hmm. if I have some food in my stomach when I'm drinking it, if mm -hmm. I'm maybe having the one without the nitrates, if I wanted to go that far, or mm -hmm. if I wanted to have a cocktail, I do make sure that I can enjoy it a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I want to enjoy it to the point where I can wake up the next day and it's part of my life and I don't have to pick and choose because I don't want to have to pick and choose between wine. So if I can get to the gym the next day and I can hydrate enough to have a glass, um, eat enough, making sure I'm not feeling sick and mm -hmm. then still getting to bed at a reasonable hour, I think it's something that by no means needs to be cut out of your lifestyle. A hundred percent. And that's what we call balance. Yes. Balance, yes. balance, balance. You you don't have to say no to those things. It's just about making sure that you are feeding your body the nutrients that it needs exactly. to counter the mm -hmm. negative of what you are consuming. Yeah. Um, I'm going to segue into something that's going to make people feel a little uncomfortable. Um, but we need to talk about poop for a second. Yes, I said poop. Um, I firmly believe that our poop tells us a story about what's going on on our insides mm -hmm. and it gives us it gives us an insight as to how our body is operating internally so I have no shame in asking our clients mm -hmm. hey did you poop today how was your poop what did it look like do you even poop in general um, because I mean to be frank poop matters absolutely and and give them the spiel on yeah. that it's a lot more indicative of how much you're storing how fast your gut is actually um, processing your food which mm -hmm. is ultimately going to be the huge part because if something's staying in there for one two days not only is it getting all of the negatives and the positives from your meals but it's just not necessary our gut bacteria is able to kind of push things out on a very fast basis 
Um, if you are having complications, it could be malabsorption issues. So for again, there is actually a clinical term that would define malabsorption. And so that's about, depending on how much you're going in that day, mm -hmm. um, I would definitely ask your physician if it's something that you should be worried about because if it's not appropriate, if it feels uncomfortable, you mm -hmm. could be removing all of the fat in your gut and not absorbing it, oh. which could lead to malabsorption and low vitamin D, right. A, E, and K. And those are huge. Those are our fat-soluble vitamins. And if we're not giving them an opportunity to be absorbed, mm -hmm. and we're just either removing them too fast or even just not giving them a chance to be absorbed appropriately, there falls some really negative yikes yes okay yeah. yeah you gotta look at your poop every once in a while okay mm -hmm. um so if somebody is disturbed by what they're seeing or what they're not seeing yeah who do they ask where do they go to i mean mm -hmm. can you provide like one piece of advice sure. for like how to move forward and discovering like why this is happening absolutely i think if you are concerned if you if it's a vitamin deficiency, that is something to look for. Mm -hmm. um, I would make sure that you are weighing yourself consistently, um, bringing that information. Sometimes I take a picture of my scale on my iPhone because mm -hmm. it's date tagged already. It's not for anybody else but me, mm -hmm. but then I can track it because if you're having some fluctuations, you're plateauing, you could be at any time holding five to 10 pounds of waste in your gut. Mm -hmm. And so then there's some of your you know, fast acting diet trends. You sure. can lose that really fast, but definitely reach out to your visit physician. Um, have your lipid panels checked, your cholesterol. If that's high, you could not be having enough fiber, and that's a very easy way to lower that clinical value as well. Um, so it's a conversation that is definitely a little awkward, but mm -hmm. it's worth looking into because it is. there are clinical values that we can determine can be affecting our health, mm -hmm. lethargy, um, I love a good nap, but yeah, I don't not all think the time. That, yeah, <laughs> not for this measure. <laughs> no. Um, and speaking of fiber, yes. What role does fiber play in all of this? Fiber is everything. Mm. So we have pre, or I should say, prebiotic fiber. Um, amongst you know all of this conversation about mm -hmm. the healthy bacteria, mm -hmm. the prebiotic fiber is basically going to be you know when you're hopping on a roller coaster and you're trying to just get to the end, mm -hmm. it's going to be the cart that you sit in. So any of the waste that you want to get out of your body, it's that's what it uses to excrete itself ultimately. Okay. Um, and then you're giving that live bacteria food, so you're feeding your healthy gut bacteria because they are living bacteria, just like a plant or just like a dog. They need to they need food. Um, so when you feed them appropriately, that's when you have, you know, healthy gut, flat tummy. That's gotcha. So yeah. the probiotics feed the prebiotics. Yes. Uh, yeah. If, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. You're correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah. I know that a lot of people will take, um, they'll get on the probiotic train, and they really don't know what they're doing. They're just doing no. it because everybody else is doing. Can you give again one tip as yeah. to how to get it naturally? How yeah. do you get those probiotics and prebiotics naturally? And then if they need to supplement. Sure. If, I would recommend supplementing if you already know that you have a diet that's very high in processed foods because mm -hmm. the only way to get a healthy gut is to eat a little dirt. Eat your raw produce, whether that's in a smoothie or a salad. Make sure that you're getting enough bacteria, fermented foods, kombucha, mm -hmm. um, kimchi, things like that. Um, just to kind of supplement your own and if you know that you're not getting enough raw food or fermented foods Then ask your physician as to which probiotic or a registered dietitian mm -hmm. Which one's good for you because mm -hmm. there's actually very limited research on which strands are Beneficial so sure. we know that there's one strand that might cause healthy digestion But ultimately if you go and you take one of those 500 billion yeah, units of cells. 20 million. There's no research saying that all of them are going to either work, help mm -hmm. you, or do anything specific. It's mm -hmm. just not there yet. So I would save your money and just go with S diet again. Start with the food. Mm -hmm. Always start with the food. Yes. 100%. And, and log it and journal it mm -hmm. and pay attention to your poop too. Absolutely. <laughs> and of oh, course, yeah. everything else that, as yeah. you explained earlier in your symptoms. Mm -hmm. But if you feel great, continue what you're doing. Yeah. Oh my God, I love it. Um, okay, last question for you. Sure. What are your top three foods that you believe can help restore and rebalance your gut microbiome? Yeah, so I do try ultimately it's not always perfect, but I try to have a salad a day, just knowing that it is really hard to get dirty food. Mm -hmm. um, so I eat a salad a day just to make sure that there's you know, a little bit of raw bacteria in my gut. Um, I try to have 
a little bit of fermented food each week. So mm -hmm. I do have a couple kombuchas a week, you know, depending on which ones are on sale because sure. they do get a little pricey. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But it's an easy way to save money on a really pricey supplement. Yes. So you know it's refrigerated, you know mm -hmm. that they're still alive when they get to your mouth, they go through your body and it's just easy. Um, and ultimately I do try to make sure that I do have, I take um, a couple different supplements, but that depends on my day. Sure. Um, I do take L-glutamine okay. as well to repair my gut um, sometimes, but other than that, I do stick to food and mm -hmm. I don't take probiotics unless I'm taking an antibiotic or I know that all of that good bacteria is being flushed. And if I travel, so that is something, uh, if I'm traveling, I make sure that I do pack a supplement, a probiotic, because I know I'm probably not gonna have a salad when I'm on vacation. Absolutely. Yes. Um, go back to what you said about mm -hmm. refrigerated, like cold yeah. probiotics. So why is that important? They're living. So if you go to the grocery store and you go to CVS and your probiotic that you are hoping has all of these live cultures in it, you have to question what's the environment that they've been through before they get to that bottle the one that they're living in and what it's going to do within your body. It's mm -hmm. already been through hell and back. Mm -hmm. I have to say that. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately, yeah, I, I question because there's only so many clinical studies mm -hmm. on these supplements nowadays and um, I challenge everybody to go look at what they are. But probiotics are one of those things that you do want it to be alive. Um, just like a cheese is aged or a yogurt has probiotics in it, those yogurts stay refrigerated. So mm -hmm. why aren't most of our supplements? It's just a little thinking question, but yes. I do take that into consideration. Absolutely. You are what you eat. Yes. And you are what you eat and what it ate. Absolutely. So it's all circle of life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Um, okay, where can our fans yes. find you? How do they find you? She has some amazing videos and lots of information that she puts out there, um, especially in the Orlando area. Um, but Good. where can they find you on social media? Yeah, um, you can find me at on Instagram, of course, mm -hmm. Gabrielle Mancella. Um, I do have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, Gabrielle Mancella Dietitian. And at this time, I'm working on my website, which should be coming soon. So check back on any of my social media pages, and we can go from there. Awesome. Um, you guys stay tuned because on our next episode, or at least next video, we're going to be putting putting together a gut healthy smoothie. You, this is something you don't want to miss out on. So if this is yes. um, if you want to add in healthier foods to your diet, this is going to be an easy way of doing that. And again, gut friendly, gut healthy. Yes that we've got to build our second brain. Yes. It's got to be in tip top shape. So make sure to rate, review, and subscribe for our For You Fitness podcast. Remember, we do this for you. We want to provide you with information that leads you to having optimal health. So we love you, and thanks for watching and listening. Bye, guys.